Today is a landmark day. Today is the day after I got home from school. <laughs> it's been a rough 24 hours. I had to take a final at school, pack up my entire room, check out, come home, go shopping for an interview outfit, go interview in the morning, and now I can actually rest until I find out if I have the internship or not. I'm gonna do a little explanation here. In 2015, we moved out of my house that was in all my old videos, so we've had all my bookshelves and my books in storage. And every time I finished a book, I'd put it in a box. Then whenever that box was full, we'd put it in storage. There were boxes of books that I have not seen for years. And we just recently decided to get rid of our storage unit, so now all my books are here. All my shelves are up. Guys. <laughs> I have bookshelves again. This is gonna get a little too real, but I know that reading isn't materialistic and you can be a reader who reads at the library or only reads on Kindle but for the longest time like years it's felt so unsatisfying not being able to have this I keep looking at it here's my bed oh yeah and there's another one over there and there's another one over here so I didn't record me putting these all up this took like five hours and I don't even I'll show you it's not even done the biggest goal was <laughs> since I haven't seen a lot of these books in years there's a lot that I don't want to hold on to so I wanted to be able to go through and comb through all the books that I didn't want anymore and I've done that let me show you all of these are books that I will be giving to half price books <laughs> I'm planning on doing an unhaul video. That video of these books I'm unhauling has been like years in the making. I've been so excited to go through all my books and see what I don't want anymore. I think I'll take you on a little grand tour and I can kind of explain myself. It's just so satisfying to like have bookshelves again. That's nuts. That's so nuts. I'm so happy. Okay, so I think this is gonna be the shelf I film in front of. So I wanted this to be like my main shelf. I never did a bookshelf tour in my old house because I was always waiting for my bookshelves to be how they wanted them to be and they never quite got there then we moved and ran out of time the way that my books were organized was i had two shelves side by side so it was just like this except they weren't across the room from each other one of them was series and then one of them was standalones so this is kind of my series shelf if you couldn't tell this used to be two shelves i'll insert a picture of what it looked like whenever i first started unpacking as i was getting more books out i realized we have quite a lot of things to put on the shelf so I have ended up having to double stack some of my books. There's, yeah, a copy of Restore Me behind there. There's a German edition and audiobooks and my ARCs back there. Favorites series right here. Sarah J. Messy and Cassandra Clare Messy. Harry Potter. There's a blank space right there. Taylor Swift don't sue me for using that phrase, but there's a lot of room right here that I don't know what to do with. Twilight series. And then there's more down here that you can't really see, but I have like to the brim just series that I read whenever I was a teenager and series I've finished since then. Again, I'm getting rid of all these, hopefully this weekend. This shelf is a little bit of a mess. So up here I have, because you love to hate me, a journal that I have stuff in for my school as well as like school textbooks in that corner is school textbooks too. This upper shelf is all like memoirs, celebrity books, nonfiction, self-help. There's a YouTubers section right there. This is all classics on the left side and then the right side is all my poetry. There's nothing like getting books out of storage to make you realize you have three copies of Anthem by Anne Rand and three copies of The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald. What can you do? This is all my childhood favorites and then just middle grade over here. These spines together look dope. This shelf is all my graphic novels, some mangas over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The bottom shelf and all four of these stacks are all like standalones that I have to squeeze in there somehow. I think I'm gonna cull through this one more time and try and find more books I want to get rid of out of all of these arcs I'm getting rid of right here that are duplicate copies or want some that I don't want to keep anymore. I have so many different sections of my bookshelf like over here you could tell there were very specific sections. And there were two that I really wanted to come through, which is my Hamilton shelf and my feminist shelf. I kind of set those apart by putting them on top of here. Then I have this beautiful wood carving that my friend Rachel made for me. I love her. I will link her channel down below. Love this. I originally had it over there, but as you could see, we ran out of space. So this is all my TBR. Actually, it's not all my TBR. This is the majority of my TBR. I don't know why. There's an empty square down there, but I double stacked books in this one. 
you can't see that. So I need to get some of the books out from behind here and put it down there instead. I have some shelves up there that I might fill. Just in case that wasn't enough. Let me see if I can open this and go in here. Surprise, there's some in my closet. <laughs> so here's more TBR. This needs to go on my Hamilton shelf. This needs to go on my series shelf. Is it gonna fit there? Probably not, but you know. Oh wait, I do have that one big gap. And then over here, these are stacks of arcs. A couple more down here that I have to trade. More arcs and then some more TBR books that I don't see myself getting to anytime soon. Oh, and right here I have like a whole section of German books. Like I have Anna and the French Kiss and Twilight in German, but I have no space for them anywhere. So eventually I'd like to clear space for all my German stuff. Yeah, I'm just so excited. It's so weird to have bookshelves again. This is so strange to me. Also, I own hundreds more books than I thought I did, so. <laughs> Girly pops. It's been 20 minutes, but I'm back because I forgot that I got books today. So I got home yesterday and unboxed these. I could have done it on camera. We're gonna end that sentence there. I got four books that were waiting for me when I got home. The first of which is kind of highly anticipated. You may remember in a previous vlog, I said I bought a book for $92. <laughs> that book arrived. Here's the tour. Here's why it was so much money. It's massive. There's a headphone jack in the bottom of the book. That is because this entire front half of the book is is like an mp3 player and it's like literally a soundtrack that goes with your book i can't believe i paid 92 dollars to get this for myself and now i'm just showing it off on the internet for free you open it there's your controls headphone jack right there i was told the first 500 pre-orders are signed and I figured, hey, that costs $92. No one's gonna buy that. I was wrong, because this is not signed. <laughs> Little pictures, poems, pictures. Yeah, I don't want to flip through this entire thing and give it all away because I paid money for this. The question is, was that worth $92? I'm debating listening to it and reading it and returning it. If I'm spending more money to return it than I did to buy it, it wouldn't be worth it, but I'm just upset it's not signed. I'm so sad it's not signed. If anything, I have Keaton's other book and I can have a matching set of Keaton Henson documents, but I am distraught. <laughs> People have been asking me, is it worth it? I'm so bitter that right now my answer is no, but maybe I'll listen to it and it's revolutionary and it's great and it's worth it but we shall see then next book that came in the mail i was like oh an amazon package i wonder what that could be then i realized i did it to myself <laughs> I'm like 60 pages into this. I just read something online that I realize now is so true about this series. After Akamath, the series basically just became fan wish fulfillment. So it doesn't even feel like this is genuine anymore. It just feels like Sarah J Maas is like doing what the fans want her to do, which means giving us a lot of porn and giving us all these hetero matchups. I'm not trying to hate on this book, but it's just ending up that way because it's not as good as the previous books in the series. The next package I got is a package my friend mailed to me because I met up with my friend McKaylin at a book signing and I gave her my copy of Restore Me because she was going to Houston to a book signing and Tahara was going to be there and she could get it signed for me. And so I've been waiting eagerly to see what the annotation's gonna be. What did she say? What's going on? And it just says Whitney. So got my hopes up. It's fine. But yeah, this is my personal copy of the Barnes & Noble edition. I have a non-Barnes & Noble edition as well that I have annotated. So now I have two copies. For what reason? No one knows. And then I got a package from Epic Reads and I got Leah on the offbeat. I'm not trying to roast Leah on the offbeat, but I'm a little bit more excited that Epic Reads has my address than the fact that they sent me this book. <laughs> I've heard good and bad things about this. When it first came out originally, all the reviews were positive. The main character is a fat Jewish bisexual main character and everyone's like, yeah, diversity, representation, number one New York Times bestseller. On the other hand, a lot of people are now saying there's scenes in it that are not handled well. And I see both sides of it. My stance on this is I'm not a huge fan of Becky Albertalli's writing style. So I don't see myself giving this five stars ever. I do fly through her books and I was sort of interested in this one, see where I stand on it. I want to read this. I don't know when 
I will get to it. But thank you so much, Epigrades, for sending this to me. That sounded so fake. Then today, as I was unpacking all my stuff, I was like, surely I will stop buying books now that I see how many that I have. And as I said those words, I got packages of books for free. <laughs> Two of these were sent to me by viewers. So I got a tweet from Twitter user Sophie Rigsby, and she said she ordered me some books just as an end of semester gift. So thank you so much, Sophie. The two books that she got me, one of them was from my wish list and the other she threw in. Just, it was her recommendation. The one that I had on my wish list is Roomies by Christina Lauren. This book is about a girl who is roommates with someone and they were roommates because we were all thinking it. I said it. It's like about the Broadway industry and they're both like the Broadway industry. That's what it's called. So the guy is illegally in the country and in order to get a Broadway job, he has to marry this girl. So they have like this fake marriage just for him to get into the Broadway. It's not called the Broadway industry, but now I'm just going to keep saying that. The Broadway industry. I've just heard that this is like, but it's about New York City, Broadway roommates sold. And then they also got me a book I've never heard of, but it's by the same author. This one is Love and Other Words. This sounds like an adult not chick lit, but like adult romance, which I think could be up my alley potentially. It's about a woman named Macy and her past love, Elliot. And it goes back and forth between their teenage years and their current years. Development of their love story, I suppose. I haven't read adult romance that's like not Nicholas Sparks, I think, right? I don't know. I've read a lot of new adult. I've read Nicholas Sparks. I haven't really read chick lit. This, I don't think it's chick lit, but you know what I mean. I am interested in giving this a try. If Sophie says it's good, then I trust. So let's go for it. The final book that I got, and this came in a package with other stuff, but I put the other stuff away and also ate half of it. And Tangled Teen sent me a box with a book called Bring Me Their Hearts by Sarah Wolf. This cover is magnificent. I'm sold. This is about a girl named Zira who works for a witch. In order for her to get freedom, she has to hunt other people's hearts. And so one day the witch she works for assigns her to take the prince's heart. And so she has to go like spy and infiltrate his kingdom and try and kill him. And then inevitably they fall in love. So it's like freedom versus love versus killing a person. I don't know. Two things that interest me about this book is she's immortal and she takes people's hearts that's amazing. And the prince's name is Lucian. I am just a sucker for this cover. Is that not amazing? They also sent me like candy and fuzzy socks and a pen that goes along with this. So I'm just really living it up for Entangled Teen. I wish I could say I'm going to give it a try soon, but I am so, so if you could see my TBR shelf. I'm so swamped. So I just want to let you know if you want to check it out. When does this come out? June 5th, 2018. A day after my birthday. <laughs> okay, this clip was so long. Bye. <laughs> I just filmed a video where I unhauled all of these books. Where to go? There. These books. 160 books. It's so satisfying. Hi, friendos. I realized I'm a doorknob and forgot to show you a couple of books I got. This whole video is just me being like, books I'm getting rid of, books I'm taking in. Before we talk about the books I got though, I'm gonna just explain you a thing that I've been doing. Look at that. <gasps> Beautiful. Oh, I don't think I talked about the... <laughs> I was looking at all the books that I was getting rid of. I knew in my heart I was only gonna get a certain amount for it at half price books or at recycled books or any secondhand selling bookstore. I think it was Stories for Coffee or on Instagram who suggested I try Depop. I decided why not try it, so I listed a couple things, didn't know if anyone would be interested, and I sold out like 90% of the things that I posted. So y'all are awesome. Thank you so much for buying books through me. So today I went to the post office and dropped off like 12 packages of stuff going out. I packaged up these that are gonna go out tomorrow. My segue talking about that is saying I'm also trying to get rid of arcs and other books so I did a lot of trades. I traded a couple of arcs that I don't need anymore for my collection and got a couple of finished copies. One of them arrived today and it is Before the Devil Breaks You by Libba Bray which is coincidentally the book I am currently reading. How you ask? Audiobooks. <laughs> I've ranted about the Diviners series so many times in my past videos. This is the third book in the Diviners series. I don't know if it's gonna be a six book series or what. I know this is not the last book. It's BuzzFeed Unsolved meets The Great Gatsby. It's 20s, it's kids with powers, it's paranormal. <laughs> Truly a superior series. <laughs> and the audiobooks for it are 
freaking theatrical. They are amazing. Whoever, I think the audiobook narrator's name is like January, which is like a character name from this book. January. That's radical. 10 out of 10. I love this series. I'm so grateful I finally have physical copies coming in the mail. And one other book I forgot to mention, I don't know how it passed my mind. A couple of weeks ago, my friend was feeling down. So I was like, hey, let me buy you a book just to like, you know, life. Books make things better. And he insisted on buying me one in return. I bought him a book that he wanted off his wish list. And I told him, him being Mitch, who is my really good friend from Snapchat and Twitter the past couple years, he's a poet and he always recommends me stuff that I forget about and I just have it on lists and never actually commit to go buy it. So I told him, if you're gonna send me a book in return, send me a book of poetry you think I would love and you want me to talk about or whatever. And he sent me The January Children by Safiya El Hilo. El Hio. This is from the African Poetry Series. I really wish I could give you a succinct description of this book, but I just know absolutely nothing about it other than the first page that says the January children are the generation born in Sudan under British occupation where children were assigned birth years by height all given the birth date January 1st. I don't think you could see but at that I have chills. <laughs> this is a personal collection of poems that describes the experience of navigating post-colonial world as a stranger in one's own land. It sounds just memorable and meaningful and I know that Mitch has great taste so excited to try this. Thank you Mitch. That's all. Ooh, can I go off on a tangent? I'm gonna tangent. I got this thing at the grocery store today. This was like four dollars for like a box of nuts. That's a lot. It's like a spicy sesame mix, but there's wasabi peas in it. I've had a wasabi pea before, but I wasn't like, oh man, wasabi peas. I'm a changed woman. <laughs> They're so good. Like, like I said, I got this today. Do you see how much I ate from your local white girl who can hardly handle spice. Wasabi peas are delightful. Especially if you have a Tom Thumb and you can get that sesame mix. Mmm. Close up on that mmm. Mmm. It is, it's 4 a.m. Oh my gosh. My sleep schedule is whack. <laughs> I'm an idiot. I forgot to update y'all. I got the internship. It's an office job and I don't know if it's gonna be hectic busy or if I'll like have time to read and like maybe vlog. We shall see. But I am so stoked. I know that we're gonna be sad that no more pet smart over the summer. No more dog snaps. I'm sorry. But all my friends are sending me videos of Spike. Like here, here's a video of Spike. My friends all still work at PetSmart and send me videos and all our favorite dogs still go. So I will try and give you as much secondhand dog content as I can but this summer I'm moving on up. I was trying to keep it under wraps, but I think I'm comfortable saying it now. I'm doing a copywriting internship at American Airlines. I was nervous to say that before I got it because it's a huge company and it's such a great opportunity. But now that I'm there, I'm just like, that was a really good note to end on. So um, check out my Depop. Have a wonderful life. <laughs> Thank you everyone for watching. If you saw a pair of demon eyes behind me, just don't tell me about it. I'll give you a shelf tour when it's light outside next time. Goodbye everyone.